<clears throat> Good morning. Thanks for coming back. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to breathe some life back into an old quilt and we're going to do it by making a table runner. So today I'm going to show you how to do applique on the embroidery machine and then we will show you how to join this into a table runner and finish it off. It's going to be a really cute project when we're finished. I like to take old quilts that have um, outlived their use because of holes and wear and everything else. This, this old girl has been with me for a number of years. I picked it up at an auction and I'm on my last few uh, yards or blocks of, of quilt that are left. But as you can see, there's some worn spots here. Um, when I got this quilt, it had several very large holes in it and it really was beyond repair. So I've been using this for many projects um, over the years and I'm going to kind of finish it off now in this video today. What we're going to need to get started is an old quilt, of course. Um, you're going to need to uh, pick out your fabrics. I have an assortment of fabrics that I've picked out. I like to press my fabrics before I begin so that I don't have to do that along the way. And then you want to pick an embroidery design. In my case today I have picked a Need a Good Design Blanket Stitch Baby. This is a really cute design. It's applique using a blanket stitch. It goes very fast. Um, this is a um, <clears throat> part of the uh, Anita Good Design uh, quilting series. So all of the blocks are uniform in size. They also have some folded fabric blocks in here with quilting in the middle. So it's a very versatile design. You can use it with, uh, you can mix and match it with the other quilting designs in their line because all of the sizes are uniform. So it's really clever. We're going to need a square ruler. I have a nine inch square ruler for this project. And we're going to need a couple of interfacings. Because the quilt is so old, the batting inside has become very lumpy. And um, it's really, you know, it's, it's not the kind of quilt that I'm going to want to take apart and rebat because as I explained to you before, there were already a lot of holes in it. It was really beyond restoration. So <clears throat> when I take my applique pieces, I want to back them with something just to give them a little bit more body as I'm, just to give the pieces a little bit more body as I'm appliquing them onto the quilt block. So I use this product called Cover Up, and it's a fusible knit product. It comes in 12 inches by 10 yard rolls in white or black. I use this for a lot of things. I use it for t-shirt quilts. I'll back my t-shirts with this before I put them into a quilt. I will use it as interfacing in my garments. I will use it as underlining in my garments because it's just a very wonderful, versatile product. It's a knit fabric. It has stretch one way and just a very little bit of stretch the other. And then it has a fusible side. So all you need to do is fuse this to the back of your pieces that you're going to applique before you stitch them down. They're going to give them a little bit more body so they won't actually sink into the, the lumps and bumps of the quilt. So that's the one product that I um, will use when I'm doing my uh, applique on my old quilts. The other product, when you quilt, when you hoop these quilt blocks into your hoop. Because there's batting and a little irregularity in it and lumps, it's going to be hard to get this hooped very firm and tight without um, what they call needle flagging. As the needle's going up and down, it's bringing the fabric with it. And so I will hoop this as it is without any interfacing or without any stabilizer. I'll hoop my, my uh, quilt block and then I will float my tear and wash stabilizer underneath the hoop as I start to stitch. That's going to give everything a little bit more stability. It's going to prevent the needle from flagging and I'll get really perfect results. 
Now what's so special about this interface, this stabilizer, I keep calling it interfacing, but it's a stabilizer. What's so special about this is it has a very firm pan to it. So when you do put this into a hoop with your regular embroidery, it really holds into the hoop well. It really holds the fabric well into the hoop because it has a nice firm uh, lot of body to it. But as soon as you put this in water, as soon as you launder or wash it, it come, becomes very soft. So I'm just going to show you real quick. We'll do our little science experiment. I have a little bit of water here and I have a little bit of waste of the stabilizer. So here it is. I'm just going to pop it in the water and as you see it instantly becomes very soft and the more it stays in the water the more pliable it gets to the point where it will actually disintegrate almost to the texture of a like a Kleenex tissue. So when you have washed your garment or when you have uh, laundered your quilt or wet it down, you're not going to get any of that stiffness afterwards because it just completely, uh, almost complete, it doesn't dissolve, it just gets very soft. But the fibers still remain underneath the design so you still have that stability. Where's my towel? So to begin hooping, you have an inner ring and an outer ring of your embroidery hoop. You want to take the ring that is adjustable, the outer ring, and you're going to want to adjust it all the way out as far as you can um, because hooping a quilted piece of fabric is very bulky and it's going to take a, a good bit just to get it in here properly and, and with the correct tautness. This is why I am floating my stabilizer underneath the hoop afterwards instead of trying to get my sta stabilizer in the hoop as well. Um, there's enough thickness in here. I don't want to put too much strain on my hoops and floating it underneath is just as effective in this instance as putting it in the hoop itself. So once I get my fabric kind of centered where I want it to be, I lay my inner hoop inside and I start at the top or the bottom in your case, whichever I start at one end and I just start to work it into the hoop like that. And then I want to make it taut as tight as I can and it is pretty tight as a drum. But I don't know if you can see this or not, but you will see a lot of irregularities in like the hoop, I'm sorry, the batting has balled up in certain places which make it very irregular and that's what kind of tricks your needle into um, thinking that there's something wrong and it starts to flag and skip stitches and break threads and everything. So this is why we are gonna float a piece of stabilizer. After we get this into the hoop, we will just float this piece of stabilizer down underneath it. And if your sewing machine has a basting function, you can just baste all the way around here. And if it doesn't, what I usually do is, um, with this particular design, it's doing a, an embroidered border first. So what I'll do is just put a little straight pin in, right in the center. If I don't, didn't have a basting function, I would just put that straight pin right in the center to hold that batting down to keep it from shifting until the machine has secured it down. But I do have a basting function on my machine, so that's what I'm going to use with it. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the embroidery, and I'm going to show you how to do machine applique on the embroidery machine, which is a lot of fun. Before I actually get started appliquing, I want to show you the elements of this design so you can see what's happening. This is actually a quilt in the hoop design, which as if you saw my previous video on piecing in the hoop, you'll remember that it, it sews several outlines where you're going to stitch down your batting and then you're going to stitch down your first piece of fabric and so on and so forth. Um, with this design, it has you stitching down your, doing an outline stitch, and then stitching down your batting, and then adding your top fabric, then adding your, um, the stippling and everything. 
So we're just going to we're just going to pass right through those first few steps because I've already put a pre-quilted piece of fabric into my hoop. What I'm going to do is just the two elements. I'm going to do the baby border first and then I'm going to do the applique in the center. And that is going to um all that is all I'm going to do with my um, my block and then it'll be ready to be uh, put into the project. So now it's made the outline of my baby. So what I need to do now is cut a piece of fabric that's going to completely extend beyond that outline. So I'm going to first fuse my fabric with my cover-up interfacing that we discussed and then I'm going to lay it down on this piece and it will secure my fabric to my quilt block. The easiest way to do this is just to take a ruler and kind of measure, not kind of, measure the area that I'm going to need to cut my fabric. So I'm going to cut a piece of fabric 5 inches by 5 inches. That's going to give me enough um, overlap that it will um, stitch my entire piece of fabric down. I've backed my fabric with the cover up. I'm going to make a little pink baby because the white is just going to blend in too much with this faded quilt block. So I'm going to do a little pink baby and I have changed my thread color to white and now it is going to secure my piece down. Now it's time to take my hoop out which is okay. As long as I don't take the fabric out of my hoop, I can take my hoop in and out as much as I want. And what I'm going to do is trim around very close to this stitching line. Okay, I've trimmed around my little pink baby. And now we're going to go ahead and start the machine and it is going to begin to blanket stitch around my applique to secure it down. Sure is a lot easier than doing this the old-fashioned way, isn't it? And my baby's been secured, blanket stitched all the way around. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue finishing up the embroidery on the blanket stitch baby and then this block will be complete. Now my design is finished. I'm going to take my little pink baby out of the hoop. and eventually I will trim this block down. I'm going to remove my basting stitches, which they'll come out very easily. I just use a seam ripper and rip about every fourth stitch and then just pull it out from the back. I have my stabilizer on the back, the, the tear and wash, as I talked to you about before. It tears away really easily. Um, I usually end up just leaving it in the middle. If the stiffness bothers you, you can just spritz it with a little uh, water bottle and that'll get real soft and, and pliable. But anyway, I have my cute little block done. I'm going to complete a total of five blocks and then show you how I'm going to assemble this into a cute little baby wall hanging. All right, we'll be back soon.